Hey everybody, Scott Stevens here. 21 May uh, 2013, the day after the Oklahoma City, the Moore, Oklahoma tornado, which fascinatingly enough is has taken very, very similarly the same path to a previous tornado. And the Storm Prediction Center and the National Storm Severe Weather Lab being in Norman, Oklahoma, essentially in the back door of this event, you know, all of this technology has been laid out in front of the mainstream scientific community. And have they picked up on it? Have they followed through on it? Have they questioned anybody about the chemtrails or the potential that we can modify the weather? When we have known since the 50s that there is an office answerable to the president on weather modification, that in the wake of World War II and some of the technologies that were uncovered and understood in the late 40s and early 50s, they knew that weather would be one of the most important tools of warfare. This is simply a given. And we see what has happened with weather and climate over the last 30 years and can't imagine, those of us that know, that the mainstream hasn't yet figured it out. They want to blame it on CO2, they want to blame it on, on climate change, whatever that is. And yet there's weather modification. There is weather as a force multiplier. There is weather as a tool of terrorism. And we have drones in the sky leaving their trails. We have climate change, we have events, we have record highs, record cold, record droughts, all without measure in recorded human history. And we want to blame it on CO2? We want to blame it on climate change? No, there is something very much more direct. And we'll start with a look at a satellite picture, and I did not save many yesterday. I'm sure you've all been saturated with this news via mainstream. When there's a disaster, when there are victims, they love to parade them in front of the camera. This is what they do. Glorify the victims. And right now, with weather and victims, it can all be blamed on God. It could all be blamed on carbon dioxide, which the powers that be and those families have done absolutely nothing via our fossil fuel addiction to try to get us to the other side of. So, we'll start with a look at satellite imagery just before the beginning of this tornado, this more Oklahoma tornado, and we'll see just how convoluted the clouds were across the Southern Plains on the 20th of May, 2013. Tuesday, May 21, uh, Scott Stevens here with OrStudInfo. And, you know, I, I, I archive satellite pictures on a fairly regular basis. This one from the Plains yesterday, uh, May 20, uh, which happened to be a, an incredible day for Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, more Oklahoma uh, in particular. Um, and it's interesting because that morning, yesterday morning, I happened to sit down, grab, save this picture, and notice this incredible collection of waves that were across uh, essentially everything from this cold front to dry line and eastbound into Arkansas. And they're of varying directions. Some are arcing this way, some are much smaller scale coming this way. Others are even of, of a different formation up across the green country, northeastern Oklahoma. Nevertheless, it caught my eye and I thought, ah, I should post this just because it's fascinating. Even up here in northern Missouri, all of these holes punctured through this cloud deck, uh, center there, and we have these spokes radiating off of that, and then concentric circles uh, surrounding some of these uh, some of these patterns. It's all very unnatural, and I don't care which TV station, which you're watching from Kansas City to Columbia, Springfield, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, they're all aware of chemtrails. They're all aware of weather modification. They just don't know how to recognize it, and what's happening when they look at their satellite imagery. That, nevertheless, this was 1945 Z time yesterday, which was inside of 10 minutes prior to this tornado forming in this particular location. And uh, what else I wanted to show you was up, up, up here in Canada on the northwestern side of this massive storm that was curling across the middle and northern part of this country, where that ton of trails that by sunset, when we get a slightly lower sun angle, we can see across Saskatchewan, across Manitoba, across North Dakota, uh, Montana, South Dakota, these trails here, 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 all very regular and intense in their coverage. So they're, they're engineering this whole storm 
every single aspect of it. And these trails give them real-time data on how the atmosphere is performing, how the, what the atmosphere is doing. This is in a rather odd shape across southeastern North Dakota on the evening of the 20th. Look, there it was earlier in the day with the trails in place, but not quite as integrated into the high cloud cover as uh, was seen earlier. Here's our waves as we get uh, to the surface map. Here's the stationary front and the low that was spun up. The incredibly rich Gulf moisture with temperatures pressing uh, the upper 80s with dew points in the 70s. So the atmosphere was just laden with water. We have a cool front with temperatures in the 80s. And then more importantly, the dry air mass behind the stationary front that was in place. We look at the, uh, the, let's actually go to Firefox and we'll be able to see the 24 hour animation of this particular storm right there. And uh, thunderstorms have been across Oklahoma pretty much in the, the, the ensuing 24 hour period since. What I'm interested with is how this next storm is gonna take shape. Where it had this ripple here, it was this storm that swung through, the, through Oklahoma and then is it being back incorporated into the storm that's spinning across the Dakotas. Another slug of energy keeping these storms energized across Oklahoma today. This guy, and then another low parking itself across the northwestern U.S. We'll pump up a temporary ridge along the western, uh, or the, the western plains and, and the front range of the Rockies with cool and unsettled weather into the west. Maybe some gusty winds. California is exceedingly dry. They are as dry now, the end of May, as they would be in August. But what I'm interested in is this ridge is starting to, to amplify across the middle of the nation. This is Tuesday, May 23rd. So this was uh, just well, Thursday, May 23rd, just two days out. And as we get some of this moisture leaking back into West Texas, into New Mexico, into Colorado over the next day or so, we may see another severe weather outbreak, although without the intensity of this past one. But still, this kind of setup, a broad southwesterly flow, inflow from the Gulf of Mexico, could make for an interesting severe weather scenario across the far northern, far high plains and western high plains as we move into this uh, this coming weekend. All right, let's go back to uh, College of DuPage has got a great resource when it comes to satellite imagery. What I'd want to show you was this plume of moisture off the coast of California during the past essentially 12 hours. And we can see in here tracks, 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 trails. Trails, 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 trails. Now, what I don't know is how the compression, when we go to export this and then send it off to YouTube, how much of this is going to be lost. If you can watch this at 720p, then that is a good thing. You're gonna get the, the most uh, resolution or the most data out of this. You can see the trails. Boom, there's another one. It, it, it turns into this incredible bloom of a cloud. And even these two, this is kind of fascinating how instead of streaming along with these clouds, they're being pushed strongly out the front edge of it. So it's like there's, there's clouds drifting this way, and then there's some force on the very top of them that is running them almost due southeast, or 90 degrees angle to that. And that would be that con conflicting angles, those conflicting movement of clouds that give us the square clouds that we see in the sky almost every single day, but especially within the cirrus cloud cover. All right, we're gonna see more Oklahoma cities, more, uh, more Oklahoma uh, tornado events, and all of them have some handprint of man on them. There is no such thing as natural weather anymore. That has been lost and has probably been gone for the better part of a minimum of 30 years. So I'm looking at this at the window and I've seen a few planes overhead today, all low, and doing what they normally do, but no trails. I mean, none. And so, and so I look off the west, and I see this little stripe being laid down. You know, I'm kind of curious what uh, plane left this up, uh, up a little ways, and uh, it ended up being, you know, just this little guy. That I focused on just a moment ago. It was this this little guy was our little chemtrail plane today, and now I'm seeing another. And of course, it's the uh, the regular fare, 
the uh, commercial airliner masquerading as a, or the drone masquerading as a commercial airliner. But this was the spot that had my attention. And it was this tick that would have continued on and marked off this spot. So what's the atmosphere here doing? How is it behaving to allow the trail to literally be squished like that? Just compressed, pushed together. Just like you've got little fingers squeezing it, but that's what's happening to this trail here. Something is compressing it from each end. And this tra trail precisely marks where the zero point is, where, where it is not getting compressed. Ten minutes ago I was talking about a trail that was out here and it kind of had been compressed. And what had happened, I was able to see this from the, the kitchen window, is then this band came across right at the point where the trail was compressed. That center bar, that center axis that hadn't yet been squished on both ends. And now I'm finding more stripe, 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 stripe. These stripes are showing up, and the first one was centered on where that previous trail has shown up. Now we're seeing some other wave action showing up in the atmosphere as well. And indeed, I just saw this. Got another plane coming in. Another, another one pretending to be a Southwest flight. Coming on in, and it's interested in the top of this, this developing cloud. Call us in just a little bit. Oh, okay, very good. Just stepped outside, you know, I, I, we talked about that one compressed chemtrail. And now we've seen all of these other waves coming together with previous trails run across them. You've got one, wow, this top guy's a trail. We had a trail riding through here, and then we had a plane just show up, came across, and he, he crossed this trail right where it uh, emerged into the clouds. Another fun little waveform taking shape right in here. And so uh, all kinds of waves are beginning to show up in the atmosphere now. And they need these planes to keep tabs on all of them. It's just part of the function of what they do. And now he's, he's coming out strongly and now he's making a, a bend to the west. Turning. Chemtrails used to keep tabs on all of these waves and how they impact our weather. And boy, do they ever. Whatever they're doing, they're going full bore now. Full on. As uh, that first chemtrail that kind of sparked my attention to the western skies has led to this whole development of, you can see all this rippling in here. And uh, it has just been marked like crazy with trails. Some beyond the side of the trees, one, two, three. This one's just come up and moved on through. It's now arcing to the west where we've got some, some cirrus clouds uh, coming together. Again, some trails persisting, others not so much. But nevertheless, they are engineering the holy crap out of this next inbound event. And from what was a f just one trail with a squished trail, now we have this incredible lenticulars now beginning to come together across the mountains, across the lower part of the Sangre de Cristos, and then a ton of trails in the sky. So it had been a pretty innocuous uh, day without a whole lot of activity, and then and we saw it begin. And all this has happened inside of the past two hours. So much for Chemtrail Free, May 21, 2013.